That's the name of the thing we do. Okay. All right. Cease your humor. This is no fun. No fun is allowed. Welcome to Boss Barrel TV. It returns 22 years later from 2000 when it originally came out. God, I don't even know when. I'm Griff. With me is Gene. Hi. Hi. I'm Colin. And Colin's here. And so is whoever this guy is who really likes whatever that wine is. Yeah. This is it, guys. Welcome to the return of video. That's not a waifu. Turn this off. <laughs> I was this promised is, waifu. This is my waifu. This is Mr. Zong Lee. Yeah, I bet you feel safe in his arms. Look at I this. I feel safe in his arms. Look at this thing. Look at that. He can do that. What the Golly. hell is that? Yeah. You'll find out on the next exciting episode. Of That's one of the things from Tunic. You're not wrong. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I want to show you guys one of the best games ever created, Genshin Impact. And uh, you're along for the ride. Awesome. Uh, so I'm just going to get cruising here. You might ask, hey, Griff, what do you do in this stupid ass waifu game? And I'd be hey, like, hey, Griff, what do you do in this That is a question that I have. That is. Yeah. So um, mild spoilers. Uh, like I'm. Oh, it's Breath of the Wild. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> the answer is it's Breath of the Wild. It's uh, a big Elden Ring map. There's a big map. We're gonna go take a look at the stuff. So if when when I play, I am hitting off some things on a list um, that I'm gonna do every time. So like I'm gonna go check my battle pass and see what we gotta do. So I get some I get some points for logging in. Oh, look at that. That's cool. What happened there? Uh, and then I got some checklists of stuff I'm gonna do there. I've got more activities on this list uh, that I need to go um, go attend to. So. Oh, just, yes. Uh, Farming. Yeah. Such sweet, sweet satisfaction. Yeah, that's the end game, baby. That's it. That's it. The farming. It's my middle school days of playing EverQuest. That's it, man. See? That's it. That's why I love this game so much, because it's MMORPG minus having to play with other people. That sounds nice. Uh, so we're in Sumeru, which is the new location. And what I'm going to do here is one of the, like, the weekly activities uh where we're gonna go do these kind of random bounties and uh with each of the new continents or major areas that come out they get a little bit they tweaked slightly so this one that says invulnerable geo and hydro resistance decreased so i'm gonna accept that and then i'm just gonna take all these stupid quests here Oops. Pull up our map. Oops. Pull up our map. Don't open your menu. Don't open my menu. Don't look at my... Oh, I guess my UID is right there still. Oh, no. I should have that blocked out. I've got the labels over it. Awesome. There you so, go. So, we are going to go fight a mamster. So, it said it's invulnerable to Geo. So, old daddy here is not going to be able to do much good. Um, so, let's switch so over. Is Geo a type of damage like elemental or... I'm glad you asked. Yes. Uh, so there are elemental damage types, and uh, those come into play and really craft the way that uh, you play this game. Um, because what I think damage types, I think like, okay, damage is going to one one monster is going to be weak to a damage, or you know, if it looks like it's poisonous, it's going to be weak to healing or something like that. You know, that whatever old trope. Uh, that's actually not necessarily the case. Uh, there's more of an emphasis on um, intermingling the multiple damage types to create reactions. So okay. you're encouraged to try out uh, parties of different makeups. So less like the classic Final Fantasy of like, fire is good against ice, ice is good against lightning or whatever, where this is... I don't really know what happened there, but it, it sounds like everything's getting chained together to kind of build upon other, or work together to build, to break immunities, or to enhance their own attacks, or... Yeah, it's it's definitely enhancing your own attacks. So, um, I'm going to get more on that later here, but I just want to show you, like, what this looks like. So, there's that was just some random encounter-type uh, battling stuff. You Speaking know. of Final Fantasy, that looks like a Ninja Rydia. Yeah, this is my favorite character. She's a four-star Kiki Shinobu. She's a ninja lady with a mask on. And you know what the best part about her is? No idea. Oops. It <clears throat> is... Look at that. 
She got a hoodie. It's like a samurai. <laughs> oh, God damn it. That's amazing. It's so, so cool. Uh, yeah. So let me just show you a few more things. So so when I log in, right, I go and I'm, I'm knocking out my dailies. I'm going to... If I'm feeling like I'm trying to finish off the battle pass, then I'm going to um, go do a couple other things like do my daily quests here, uh, which, you know, can be as simple as do a little race that takes a few seconds or uh, fight some monsters that takes a few seconds. So it's, it's you know, pretty standard fare if you were to compare it, Gene, like you already did to an MMO, very much that same kind of flavor. Um, and then there's a few more things that, you know, now this may look familiar here, look at this, look at this wall climbing. Look at that. That's Breath of the Wild shit. <laughs> I've never stamina seen that bar. before. <laughs> yeah, it's Stamina Bar Hard Novel. <clears throat> um, yeah, so I'm changing between my characters. Do all characters have glidey wings to fly around? They do. Yeah, so just like Breath of the Wild, hmm. you gotta get around somehow, right? It's true. So, when you jump off shit, everybody glides. Into the wind. Are you combat in this game uh so genshin impact is criticized for being a, a not challenging game because uh it is a dps rush uh whatever you're doing really ultimately just comes down to can you output the amount of damage uh that you need to output in order to achieve victory and uh not too difficult I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because that can be very satisfying. I agree. There's some things that are actually really fun about it, too, um, that the game does get criticism for where some bosses like are criticized for not being interesting or novel enough. Um, so instead, uh, what, uh, what 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 I and I believe other players like to do is you kind of make your own challenges with it. So it's like, OK, can I fight this boss and get it killed before it gets to this like invulnerability state that you normally shouldn't be able to do so it's kind of this like self-imposed challenge and then even the even the game will recognize some of those things and and uh um, on occasion give you an achievement for doing something like that that's cool i mean it's i like that i, I mean it's not everything has to be some dark souls level like difficult like grueling fight like it, those are nice if they're sprinkled around and but you can build those challenges yourself. I mean, that's how, like, speedrunning a lot of those certain challenges came away, because I... Call it, I remember when Gears of War came out, and we were playing through that game. Long... Punching only! Yeah, we were playing through... <laughs> pu literally meleeing only. We punch everything. And not like the chainsaw attack, biffing everything to death. That sucked. But it was fun. So it's... It's cool. It, 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 the, the difficulty doesn't necessarily... I, I feel like, personally, difficulty doesn't have to be super hard-coded into the game. You can always make it more difficult if you enjoy the experience by itself. I agree. Uh, you can do all sorts of things with difficulty. Uh, speaking of not showing the pause menu, um, one of the Good things job. that you could do is uh, pull up your world rank. So uh, one of the things that a player would do who would be new to this would be trying to, to get their world rank up as high as they possibly can. World rank then corresponds to the difficulty of the monsters, mobs that you're fighting, as well as the rewards that you get from those things. Uh, so one of the things that, you know, you could hypothetically do, Gene, like you just said there, is if there was a challenge that was too, you know, robust for you, you could then drop your world rank down uh, a level um, to then tackle it. But then, you know, you're you're getting fewer rewards uh, or less interesting rewards. I think removing gates is a good thing, and that sounds nice. <laughs> so what I just did here is another kind of daily activity that you can do. I used... Um, your resin there at the bottom, which is like this currency that fills up over time, real lifetime. <laughs> um, and then, ooh, nice. Wow, that's actually very good. Oops. Get out of there. Get out of there. Nobody wants you. <laughs> go, um, go away, bear. <laughs> uh, so what, what I did here is I, I ran this thing called a domain, and a domain is going to yield rewards. In this case, I'm getting um, equipable items for my characters, which I will show off more later. Uh, but yeah, cat so, ears. So what? Yeah, yeah. This is Tainari. I like him a lot. He's a funny man. Um, he's like Donatello of the game. Uh, so what I wanted to do, right, was show you. That's kind of what I'm doing when I jump in and I play this game. Like it's a nice kind of turn the brain off. Uh, I'm going to go 
you know, through my daily activity, I'm going to go knock out some domain stuff and then I'm going to just like chip away at the, at the battle pass as I need to. Um, I mentioned something, uh, so like the, the phases, uh, that you can do and the resin. So resin is that currency that, that fills up over time. Um, if we look up here, we can see it. I'm full. I'm 160 out of 160. So this is one of the bigger gates that it that Genshin Impact received criticism for. When the yeah, outset is like, man, this game. I want to play more, but I can't play without. You know, I'm not getting anything, so to speak, is what people say. I, I, I'm out of resin. So what do I do? I can't get more items. Um, so I'm gonna run with the Geo Bros here and. Um, the answer is like, well, there's still plenty of things to do. You just aren't going to be able to farm artifacts. You're not going to be able to uh, hit quite all the same things that you would if you had that full. And they've been slowly kind of doing some things to make that a little bit more friendly and quality of life. This is one of the earlier main world bosses in the game. Um, so this is uh, uh, just kind of an interesting and fun little showcase here where I can show you like this would be one of these dudes that like, you know, you're probably not you're you know gonna take a couple passes at maybe uh, this would be your, like your end game stuff and and as time has gone on he's got a little bit easier okay, we've got a cutscene and we're gonna skip it <laughs> boy we got time for that shit also, fuck child. I'm on team anti-child. Hey, child. Oh, he uh, definitely looked like he got a little spooky there. <laughs> so his gimmick in this bit here is right. He's got. He's now wielding two visions, so he's got two elements. Ah, uh, how scary! And then he's getting clapped. Yeah, he is getting clapped. I'm not doing so great either. Here. Uh, so. What I'm doing there with uh, old Zongli Daddy is dropping this pillar that gives me this super cheap shield that basically removes any damage that I'm going to take whatsoever. Hard block on everything. It also gives me, a tw I think, 20 or 40% resistance shred to all damage, or the damage type that I'm doing. So it's very useful in that you could have him on your team. He's basically a win button, right? You throw up your shield. Now you're shielded, you block a ton of damage, and then you're also decreasing everything's resistance that you're coming in contact with. Pillar here is fun, because you can climb it, and you can make it look like a ding-dong. <laughs> uh, see? Look at this. Look, well, like it's doodle. Uh, and then you got two of them, uh, and then they pulsate and they do damage. Nice. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, what we saw here was Goro, Archer... Uh, so we don't ever, we're never really going to use his normal attacks. We're going to use his, um, his support abilities here. So he's going to give a buff to our team with that. I'll so kind of looking like, so you have a team of people and you have four, <laughs> nice. <laughs> that, okay, that was my favorite thing right there. So you have a team of people and you can adjust them to, like you said, build off the other abilities. So you have, you know, home slice drop on the pillar, which makes everybody more durable. Other guy dropping a flag makes it more offensive oriented, so you can really kind of alternate and build that in. So then you have four characters per team. Yeah. And I don't know, man. How many characters do you got? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I could show you. So, oops, that's the items. Uh, character list. So there's a lot. Uh, character selection. Here's all of our characters. Uh, I could pull up the start menu and show the character archive, but I mean, don't pull up the I'm start not, menu. I'm not gonna do that. You got guys. I'm gonna get my login and IDs. Uh, but yeah, there's there are a lot of characters now at this point. Awesome. Um, and that's a great uh, uh, kind of kind of pin that I want to put in this, which is for me the thing that I really enjoy at this point, and I think this is kind of where the the end game has been realized um, is in exploring characters and their synergies together uh how do you build an extremely efficient team uh so like this team that i have here uh with these four characters it's all geo damage has its pros has its cons um 
but it's a very cool and synergistic team to have put together. It's very boneheaded on Bunga levels of play. Uh, but these four characters like have incredible synergy because of all their defense buffs and how we've got Ito, which is our DPS uh, big bad boy. Uh, and then he's running off uh, d defense to do damage, which is kind of interesting. Um, so, but I'll come back to that more because uh, that's that's uh, something that, that is really like the selling point for me in this game. Now for you guys, if you were to pick this game up, you may ask... Well, what am I doing? What would I do? What's what does not end game content look like? So the first thing is you'd be doing, you know, some some um, world quests, I think is what they call them. And you'd be kind of following the main story, which um, the main story is is fairly ho hum, like your kind of standard uh, stranger in a strange land. Um, we see our main character here. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you know, look at this idiot. Uh, Earth is our male main character. Lost his sister. Uh, the cool thing about our main main character here is they, uh, you know, depending on the the region that they're in, the new regions will bestow them new elemental options. So you start out, you have wind. You're in the country of wind, and all the way up here, right in Mondstadt. Uh, so you start wind, you move down south into Liyue, which is going to be your Ch China equivalent, and you uh, you know you have Geo, then you take on Geo abilities. Um, then we go down here into uh, Inazuma, which is your Japan equivalent, and you get uh, lightning, and then you go to Sumeru, which is the uh, current location uh, that we were just in, and the, the, the newest release, so you can see kind of the biome diversity of lush forest and desert ass desert um, and this is your uh, southwestern asia northeastern africa well weird how that works out look at that northeastern southwestern um <laughs> and and that that's they, they're kind of capturing that vibe here interesting uh but then you learn uh dendro which dendro is also the most recently so when the game launched they only launched with seven of the elements and the the dendro was the long-awaited edition um so you're going through the continents you learn new shit for your main character but you never use him because he kind of sucks uh he's actually f very mid uh except for dendro so he's got a good new kit what i'm trying to do here is get to an icon i left on my map because when you start playing there's a whole bunch of Breath of the Wild, like little mini quests. Uh oh, this isn't looking good. Um, around this area that uh, uh, we can go um, partake in. Some of those things are very similar to those dailies, like, oh, it's a little spawn of monsters. Oh, this is not going to end well. <laughs> we're Look out to, below. We're going to have to call an audible here. Use some food. Uh, store. Eat food. So I guess you've already answered one of my questions, which was, is there a oh, base game? hey, hey, where have you been, Colin? Is there a base? <laughs> I, listen, I am, I'm taking all of the what information into me <laughs> and processing. Uh, my question was, is there a base game or is this just a series of daily or weekly challenges? And so there is a base game. Mm -hmm. Is there an end game or is this just a constantly evolving? We're adding more to the story more areas Ooh. to go to or is there like a main quest and you go do this and then there's just Colin additional was, content that they continue to add Colin's too busy staring at the two big poles yeah baby uh so good question what does that look like um the quests uh left trigger um okay i so, know exactly nothing about this game <laughs> uh so how do i back up here story quests um I think these are hangouts, right? Can I show completed? I think I'd have to go into my um, into my uh, archive again. I don't know how to show that without pulling up the start menu. Uh, but um, yes, to answer your question, there are big sweeping story quests. And with the base game, which is free, you would be able to just start hammering out all those uh, story quests where you'd you know interact with... Um, the people of Mondstadt and solve some of their problems and learn about the Geo Archon here, Venti. He's kind of a big deal. Venti or Archons are like the gods or the 
demigods of the world. Uh, so you finish up that one, you move on to Liyue, Wei, you learn here about Song Li and his story, and you find about, you know, so you're running through the big, beefy story quests. Then there's kind of like, you know, filler story quests where you learn more about like some of the ancillary folks. Uh, and then there's like the hangout quests. So if you're like, boy, I sure really love Goro and I want to just check out his Karen ass haircut all day long <laughs> so you can do his hangout quests, which are super fun. I'd like to see the manager of the gods. <laughs> uh, so in the meantime, while you're doing that, you're also entreated to go just explore the world and uh, engage in little activities like this. So you saw that little pedestal out there and there is an icon above it. So it was like, okay, you're going to have to go chase this shit down. So here we go. I'm running. I'm following. I'm getting the baubles and I'm trying to beat the clock. Uh, uh. Oh god, I think I missed it. Oh god. <clears throat> Pressure's on. Oh. Uh. Alright. Failed. So, if I were to get that, uh, then what would happen would be I'd get a little treasure chest, and I would get uh, some little uh, uh, player experience and world experience and, and boost my AR up and all that, all that good stuff. Um, so if you were to say like, Hey, that doesn't appeal to me. I don't want to go run around and just like chase very simple, um, kind of like open world quests like that. Then let me tell you, this game is not for you. Uh, if you, if that, if that uh -oh. does not appeal, <laughs> uh, if, if collecting 1 billion Oc Korok Koroks is not something you want to do, then this game will not be for you because they literally have a Korok collect the things quest in it that has like a hundred dudes you got to go find and do little odd jobs for i do like collecting things but does the collecting ever end yes it does yeah does it, it ends it very much ends like you 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 can a hundred percent the world map so if i were to pull back out you could see that um right so here's another little world kind of quest these little guys are floating around and it's like all right so very simply Again, I'm just going to follow it to its destination, and sometimes they get in trouble. I'm going to do things here. I'm going to collect those peaches, because I'm going to cook those <laughs> into, into things later. It's very relaxing, very zen-like. We just relax. We just follow the floaty guy. We look at our cool character's tail. We say, wow, he's got a cool tail. And there we go. We plug it into its spot. Hooray! We get a chest. We get the crap out of the chest. We don't care. Gene, do you recognize that voice? Kind of? Uh-huh. So the voice acting cast is star-studded in this. Uh, Ito here is voiced by none other than uh, Michael M Middleston? No, Max Middleston. Who is One Punch Man's Saitama? Oh my god, now I recognize it. Uh, he he does uh, some superb work in ad libbing some things, so uh, yeah, the, the talent of the voice actors is very good. Um, this is a notorious little bit here. He will show you his rapping skills. Oh no. If you ask him, uh, this is getting a real oh, job. So they're saying I can't hold down a real job, huh? Well. <laughs> Sorry to break it to you, but I'm a delinquent. That means it's my job not to have a real job. And today is an important day. Yeah, so if we let this go, this thing will just be his funny, funny rap rap. Here, take a look at this. I got you. Anyway. Um, yeah, so part of the charm uh, it, it, it is kind of like the little bits and pieces of the whole package that we get here, right? So kind of just being in the world, doing those mild uh, world quests, those little mild... Uh, uh, um, objectives there where it's like go follow that dude to its location you get a feel for all the different things uh when you first start your stamina bar is fairly low so you're collecting um uh w like little floating icons i'll show you um also like i remember playing this for a hot minute god how long ago was that a while three years ago probably three, oh my god three years ago and to kind going to build on your answer to call it's like yeah it definitely there is a a solid main story and it does a good job of what's as you're inching along you get more characters and then you have more options to your team so it kind of enjoyed that where it also felt like 
as you got more people, your list of things to collect and build upon and expand gets bigger and bigger and bigger until you got a lot of stuff to do. Yeah, that's a really good. Thank you for saying that, Gene. And the cause... world also not to interrupt, but, but the world also looks really good, like it, unexpectedly good for. It is know, very I, vibrant. It is a very pretty world. Um, so that is one of the things that is worthwhile calling out here, and we'll, this will bring us back into some elemental talk. So, um, right as we find more of these things to do around the world, sometimes they're gated by uh, having a certain element in your party. So, uh, for example, um, well, this is not one, but uh, this is a this is a tool gate. Uh, so I'll show you. You're a tool. Yeah, yeah, I'm a tool for Genshin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so here I'm equipping my tool. I check this out. You ever see this thing? Look at this. Look at that notes on a screen. Eh? Sorry, I don't listen to whatever this is. Look at that. I can play it. Just like some sort of flute. Mm-hmm. How the hell do I get out of here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I've used this. Uh, I honestly... Maybe I did this one. Um, wait, stop it. Uh... We're prompted to sit, play a song, and then it'll, like, unlock certain parts of the world, just like a frickin' Zelda game. So the Sumeru area is very, very Zelda-inspired with the with the harp and being able to do that stuff. Um, but I wanted to bring this up and show you, like... So there could be something that's like, okay, you have to cross this path. Okay, how do I cross it? Well, I've got this lady with ice. Or I can swim. Or I can walk on water. <laughs> Yeah, I, I get, there's a lot of different ways that we can go about this. Like, okay, I'm just gonna be like, yo, check this out. I'm Jesus. It's Jesus, sexy Jesus. Jesus, you uh. Jesus, wife who? You've changed. Um, so really, what comes down to playing this game is are the little all the little pieces hitting for you? You know, is the open world enticing enough? Is the main quests or you know side quests kind of dragging or, or pulling you along in, in a way are you finding yourself to be compelled to try out new team comps or do you specifically really like a character that you're like man i just you know want to play and, and learn more about their kit and how to use them optimally and uh um I'll show you. So, what would that look like? So, let's say I was like, "Hey, I got a new a new character that I want to try out. I've got this guy here. Um, I've got the Wanderer, and I have him fairly lower leveled, and I need to figure out how I'm gonna play him." So, first thing you want to do is build up the character, right? So, this is here's the loop. Here's the the actual loop of what we're doing. We're going in here, and we're gonna maximize all his abilities. So we need to first look at his attributes and say, okay, here's the stats. Uh, he's at level 80 out of 80. I got to uncap him so he can get to 90. But in doing to do that, I have to collect these items. How do I collect these items? These are collected through fighting bosses in the open world, defeating mobs to collect these little things, um, exploring and finding the, the plants and fungi and shit like that. And then once you do that, you can go into his abilities and upgrade them. So, right, his basic normal attack, I'm going to then, you know, I've got it at level 6. I'm going to upgrade to level 7. Takes these three component types on the bottom. I've got enough. Bada boom, bada bing. Now, level 7. Beefier little boy. Uh, so the goal is to, you know, get that to the level that you feel necessary um, in order to be operating at the uh, optimal level that you want to be for your characters and party Ugh. it's a kitty take that oh man i'm angsty <laughs> um so that's the the hook and in order to do those things right now this is where it's all going to tie back in i need to go to certain domains right and i gotta see so this domain right uh, it's going to be providing me uh teachings of into was it ingenuity or is it integrity i forget uh but you'd line up and you'd say okay so for uh wander in this case i need to get uh right praxis is what i need to go get for him um so i need to go to the domain that provides me that but what you're gonna see here when i go to the mappy map is right 
Well, those aren't available today. This is Ingenuity. So we see here on the bottom, Tuesday, Friday, Sunday, that's where we can get this. So tomorrow, it'll then switch over and to be a different type. So now our resin comes into play. We're like, I got 160 resin. That's just wasting time, just burning real life hours, not using my resin. So I got to go do things. Um, and those things include, you know, fighting world bosses or turning that resin into other things because, right, we're trying to build our character up. That's our loop. We're trying to uh, 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 take um, all, the, all the, the resources that we have and then feed that into our characters. Like we take, um, we would take this type of thing would come from that child boss, that, that weekly big boy boss. These would come from mobs. This thing on the left here would come from that domain and I'm going to take my resin and I'm going to plug it in. So that's where people are saying like, well, this sucks. I'm out of resin. I'm not, what am I doing here? I mean, there's plenty of things to do. You can go explore, you can go fight shit, so on and so forth. Um, and I assume also that you don't need all of those particular components at, until you're like late end game or higher level characters where it's like, okay, now you really have to, to push for these particular items. We're lower level. I assume that's not as intensive. Exacto mundo. So you would you would straight up just not even be able to uh, achieve a full level character at a what you first started out, right? So like those domains. Um, when we took a look at at this one up here, right? Um, well, we'll just jump in here. I'll show you. Do you see? Uh, and then yeah. I also I'm, I'm assuming the domains are. When I was playing MMORPGs, and that's like the closest comparison I can think of, like, it sounds like it's an instance where it's like your own little dungeon that you get to yep. challenge specifically. Exactly. And they're little combat arenas. So um, in these repeatable dungeons, it's not like you're doing platforming and traversal and all that stuff. It's all just purely combat. Uh, there are domains that are going to have those like exploration and puzzle solving and and uh, uh, traversal in it, but they are not tied in with these things. Uh, so you can see here, party level recommended 38. So all your characters you'd want to have around 38. Um, and then you can see as I go up the ranking list, I get a bigger swath of rewards. So, you know, in order for me to optimally utilize all my time, uh, and resin right i want to be the max level so i can fight the things so the loop then is right get a get a party or a squad up to the highest level you possibly can and then what do what do i do now you farm equipment for the other party exactly members. and then you finally catch the dragon <laughs> the dragon is yours finally <laughs> Just a little bit closer. no one ever catches the dragon yeah no, no, there. so then you know if you're if you're like well i can't i can't catch the freaking dragon it's too hard that's it's, it's for the longest time, when I was first playing this game, one, I was playing it very poorly, and two, it just it was a struggle. So I would play the domains in co-op for the for the additional assistance. Um, but then also, if you're like not at that level where you could where you could uh, um, you know beat those dungeons and get those straight up you know purple rewards, we can go in here and we can craft shit. So. Oh no! There's a crafting. System oh yeah, here. there's crafting. This really, this there's is, always a crafting. There's always system, crafting. James. I'm having like flashbacks of me sitting in front of a stupid like barrel and be like, "What are you doing, Mister Paladin? Oh, I'm making the most dangerous alcohol in the world because it increases my strength score by five when I drink it." Oh, how many hours have you spent doing this? Oh, about ninety. Yep. Well, so that fortunately that is very streamlined here. Uh, the crafting of that stuff does not take long. You're, you, you can really quickly knock out what you want to try and do there. What does take long <laughs> is the second part of part, part of character management. Uh, so reading the dialogue. Well, no, that's the fun part. Um, Listening to the dialogue. So we talked about talents, right? That's our 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 stat. We talked about attributes. That's our raw stats, right? Okay. So characters level up, they increase stats. Crit rate is specific to this fella here. So his he gets a special crit rate bonus. Um, next, we've got weapon. So our weapon, right? We could use a whole swath of weapons. Uh, I'm currently running with this Lost Pair of the Sacred Winds, uh, which I have <laughs> at refinement rank four. Uh, so you can see here, there's refinement rank one through five. As you refine them, it means you get duplicates. The duplicates then enhance certain parts of them, parts of those stat boosts. So not only do you power up your character, you power up the individual weapons that the character can wield. Exactly. But in a fairly limited fashion, right? It's like, you know, you get this weapon, you get the you get the resources to then unlock its full potential. Happens fairly briskly unless there are these 
fairly rare very rare ones like these guys you get these two battle passes you get these so so it that one actually goes very quickly this is the time sink here now this is where you get into the long game of artifact farming uh so if i'm running this character i want to make sure that i have high attack and high crit uh for his build so uh, I want to then make sure I have an artifact that is going to accommodate that. So we can see here, this is our chalice artifact list. So I'm saying, okay, now I'm going to run here and I want to get that top stat, which is going to be your biggest stat. I want to have an attack. I want that to be my base. And then all my sub stats, those are the ones that I'm going to keep pounding through domain after domain until I randomly get one that looks like this, but doesn't have energy recharge. It has attack on top. Man, Diablo, you've changed. Uh-huh. It is very much that same same blizzard grind. And then from here, right, this is where this is where it gets even worse. Now we're pumping our junk items into our good items and leveling them up. And we can see here at the four increments we get a boost to one of the substats. So so far so good. However, this is energy recharge, which I don't need to run an optimal wanderer. Useless. <sighs> useless trash throw that in the garbage um so here this is one of my best characters i look at this and i say wow look at the stats on this lady i got a lot of hp because she's hp and then we had the sweet spot here of this uh what is this one to three or one to four i forget crit rate 50 percent chance crit damage 200 percent chance that's looking pretty gosh darn good uh, our Ito here, I think it's a similar build. We got 60 and 205. So that's the sh our sweet spot is that 1 to 2, two uh, 1 to 3. Um, it's a high crit rate. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's it pretty is. decent. It's pretty decent. I think we should have pretty decent. 2 out of 3 Ganyu swings are going to do 4 times as much damage. Genius is pretty trash. Uh, but yeah, so you're, you're farming um, those. Hey, uh, it's the wizard lady. I remember getting her. Not oh, the one before nice. this. Oh, this one? Yeah, Mona. She's a, she's a fan favorite. Wonder why. Um, yep. Wonder why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's actually very cool. Um, but uh, yeah, she got a she got a funny run animation because she turns into water. Um, I, I distinctly remember her like surfing all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so so that's the loop, right? We're we're farming um, character materials to increase our our max damage and our our efficiency. Uh, we're then beefing our talents up. We're then going into artifacts and then you know maximizing those to then suit the 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 stats that we need to build our character uh, and then all of that is leading into right our team composition which bring it back once more uh then it's not paimon is it this is not paimon this is the newest archon the hida the dendro dendro archon huh. uh, so she's like the god of flower um and uh she's funny because look at this look at her she makes a cursor <laughs> She's doing a drag select. Um, <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's funny. She's great. She can does a camera thing. Don't she read people's minds. So um, but this is what we're talking about for true meta endgame now. As we're saying, I now that I have my beefiest beef characters, I want to make a cool ass team that's gonna just dominate. And again, we're already dominating, so it's like putting a hat on a hat, right? But we want to optimally dominate as much as we can dominate. You, just, you want to dominate, but you want to do it efficiently and perfectly. Efficiently and perfectly. Big, big, big chungus numbers is what we're looking for. So then uh, it's the item refinement down to, yeah, you have the this super specific weapon, but now you need to make certain you grind and refine it so you get the perfect version of that super awesome weapon. And Yes, specifically the, the uh, artifacts is what we're looking for that perfect shit on build our character up we got our team right we're like okay so this is this is i recently recently less than like a year and a half ago discovered the insanity around the meta for this game which is so this team that i'm running right now would be a burgeon team and what it's doing is it's exploiting uh the the abilities um of this character uh grouping here so right this is my these are the elemental types we got water fire animo wind uh lightning dendro life or tree or whatever the fuck you want to call it uh Green. you got ice blizzard uh, uh cold and then um earth or geo <clears throat> so then when you're you build your team right certain doubles are going to give you additional uh, uh straight up bonuses so right if i've got uh two um 
uh, waters, right? So it says effects by power for 40% less time, and then it increases max HP by 25%. Oh, that's cool and everything. So then, right, why would I care about that, really? Like, HP, that sounds nice. How do I run an optimal team? Well, with Ayato, with his talents, his attack is going to do more off of his max HP. So now we, it's good to run two of these uh, uh, water dudes together in the same team because they are supporting each other um, and they're boosting each other. And now we've got this idiot here <laughs> who is going to uh, catch things on fire with his um, burst. Uh, so I'm going to go find some combat here real quick and then I think I'll probably hand it over to one of you guys. Uh, to sh just do some more long form talking about some of this stuff. So I nominate Colin. I agree. I will play the game. Uh, where I we will do it. We'll go here. This is. We'll just start here. So I just want to be able to show you guys what I'm doing in combat because you may have seen it up to this point. And you're like, this just looks like fucking chaos and numbers flying all over the place, and I don't, I don't know what's happening. So I could do, I could match uh, and and play with a person online, but that would be insanity. Um, You'd have to interact with another human being. No, that's disgusting. unacceptable. So why don't we try? I'm going to try this. The party recommendation is lower because I've got um, our fire dude there on the team is, uh, I think, level 70. Toma is not so hot for me uh, at the <clears throat> moment. Um, so uh, we, may, we may be struggling a bit. I saw what you did there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did that on purpose. Uh, so here's our domain. We're going to start off. We're going to elemental. We're going to burst. Our burst is going to allow some special abilities. We're going to bring in the jelly. The jellyfish is going to the, interact and have a reaction to cause those little things on the scene. Tim, we're going to get our shield on. Now we're going to burst, so he's going to do uh, elemental damage every time we do skill damage, which then we should be casting the burgeon, which causes the f the little geo globe, or excuse me, the dendro globe to explode. And then Nahida, uh, because we have the diverse party that we do, is going to do super crazy chungus damage when those things explode uh so that went extremely fast um but that is basically what uh con it's it's uh, our combat that we're running here is going to be one in which we're trying to take advantage of our rotation cycles to optimally be hitting each one of those abilities uh and then making use of our ooh, what do we got here uh, uh, some fucking garbo <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your hot trash. Uh, yeah. The lovely cycle of all games of grinding where it's like, I remember when I first found this item, I thought it was cool. And oh, like, yeah. And I'm like, pathetic. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's so fun. Like, the first time you get a, a legendary artifact, and you're like, this is game changing, even though it's defense, I don't give a shit. Um, oh, God, it's orange. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And now it's just like, how pathetic. do I how do I throw more of these things in the garbage? <laughs> um, so uh, in terms of actual endgame, uh, this is the one thing that that exists that is clearly definable as endgame. So why do we want to maximize all that shit to fight Ganon, to fight Ganon, uh, to, <laughs> to fight these four levels of the dungeon? And in here we build. So this is this is really where it becomes very complicated in terms of uh, for a new player, right? Because once you get to this level, you've got these three chambers, and in these you've got it's split in half. So that means you have to have two viable teams that are going to operate in here. Uh, so I can I haven't looked at this, so I'm just going to throw this together really quickly. Um, but this would be typically the teams that I like to run in this. So I'll just be safe with Daddy and A, and then we need oh Dungeon Daddy. Yeah. So here's our killer party right there uh, with uh, Hu Tao leading the charge, and then we're gonna do uh, this aggravate quicken team that i like with my girl shinobu and then we need uh miko and we need we're gonna end with oh yeah kazuha who's the most op character in the game i'm having flashbacks of grinding away in diablo 3 where it's like the rifts or the instanced dungeons for late games start getting so insanely percentage wise more difficult yeah so this is where right so you're getting this where it's like you know uh here's a uh thing you're a bonus you're going to get on the level here and this is where the dps check really comes in where it's like okay what i'm doing here is i am just i have a timer counting down 
right? So already a bad sign that we're not, you know, <laughs> that we just have to book. Um, so all I'm trying to do is just get to a place where I can just do maximum damage and go through my rotation optimally and be hitting everything. And then you typically want to read through like what the encounters are going to look like. So you're building your team comps to be effective against these things. So like, <clears throat> I should have switched this. Uh, for the other team because they would be a better grouping team. This team I'm running is more an individual target with Hu Tao. Got a wave dash with her, so I am canceling my dash into another dash immediately, so I am uh, spending optimal time in that state. Uh, so just do a burst here. Oh, frozen. That's my favorite status effect in any timed event when you get frozen, because then you're just watching the timer tick down yep. while you can't do anything. Yep, so we finish one, we move on to the other side, and Meanwhile. this is just like this uh, for the for the four levels. And the four levels, you know, typically are going to end in some pretty world-level bosses at the end uh, that, that, you know, hopefully you can stomp pretty quickly. Otherwise, it's a pretty solid, like, hey, you just... This is just not going to happen for you. You may be needing to back off here. These first two levels are pretty, you know, pretty straightforward all the time. Now, for these, do they? She said like a world level boss at the end of it. Are there? Is this like? Are there situations where you're going to have certain bosses where you can only battle in like a raid situation where you need other players? Because I you never hate that. need other players. You will never ever. It will never require you to ever play with anybody else. Unless that no, you you just don't need to. Um, there's one more thing I'm going to show you guys before I hand over the controls to let you kind of do anything. If you delete my items, I will fucking kill you. <laughs> oh, I get them called. <laughs> oh, they gone. <laughs> oh no, I can't unplug the controller. Well, like the reason I asked that is like I, I think back to like when I played through EverQuest, and it's like I remember like the burgeoning years, like the beginning of raid encounters, where it's like oh, it's it's these are just difficult things. Where it's like oh, you need like three groups of people to make it yeah, happen, and then yeah. it got out of control where it's like we need 60, 50, you know, some certain amount of people. Yep. And then anything that I've ever played nowadays where they have those raid encounters, it's like you have this almost like professional level people who have played together, who work together, and just monopolize and create a, a toxic, shitty environment for just about everybody. So being able to experience all the content without having to be stuck into a raid situation, that sounds really nice. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah that, that, that's, I agree with you too, Gene, because I, I remember playing WoW, and it's like, what's the end game? Oh, it's raid bosses. And I was like... How do I never do that ever mm. again? Because I, I have zero interest in it. Oh, you want to see this entirely unique and cool-looking zone? You better have the purchasable best-in-slot category. Nope. What does BIS mean, son? You innocent child, run away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got... That's what I... I again, what appeals to me so much about this game is it's that same hook, that same drug, that same, you know, whatever of, of that old... That's an angry cube. Grognar shit that we would do back in the day. Um, but you don't have to do it with other people. You know, it's it's a solo event. Uh, we're doing this stuff just because we're enjoying it. Uh, we can get by soloing everything. Um, can things be challenging? Yeah, absolutely. I is it more fun when you add your own challenges? Right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, especially when you get to a certain level. But like, yeah, there's just also so much love and attention to detail to this stuff. Like uh, these hydrostasis. Uh, hypostasis bosses are just these generic looking cubes, but they all have these super unique um, modes of operation. So like this idiot here, uh, when he's fully charged up, you know, you, you have to uh, use a, a hydro character to uh, take him his like overcoat off. <laughs> And there's a lot of diff different ones, Dropping like one for each there. element that uh, is going to do that. So there was a world boss that I just fought. Um, they'll respawn here eventually. You know, if you get enough time, they'll be back. But again, you're just getting more uh, things to then throw at uh, your character to then, uh, uh, you know, so get drawing, better shit later. Drawing comparisons to my old ass and the things that I've played, like Diablo yeah. 2 comes to mind where they, they implemented seasons in there because there was a point where it's, you were going to get very powerful to the point where the true endgame stuff you just absolutely mollywop because you are so you have spent so, a significant amount of time building that equipment list you've gotten your skills absolutely perfectly maximized so their solution was reset, reset the, the economy yeah basically <laughs> yep reset everything every x amount of months and everybody starts over so this one this doesn't sound like that's the case it sounds like there's there's a, a far larger you pool infinitely of powerful forever yes 
Yes. Until they release another expansion, or yep, yep. So exactly. Is Pong. That. Yeah. So what you guys Hold were on. describing? Oh, wait, 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 time out. This is Pong. Uh, or no. break actually. All right, cool. All right. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Um, or breakout, or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, a bunch of different names for it. So I want to return to exactly what you're saying, which is what does the end game look like, and how does that all shake out, you know, long term, and what is how do you make the longevity happen? Well, here's one thing that you can do, which is every month, every patch update, every cycle, so it runs in a five to six week cycle, they actually just switch back to a six week cycle over a five week. And uh, and with that, you get these events, is what they call them. And they're, they're, they're typically just weird ass, non-standard games that you can play. So, right, so we're, we can play here, the uh, breakout. Um, and our spoils for doing these things is like, uh, you know, you're getting those same type of items that you would get from dungeons um, or domains. Uh, sometimes they have really cool things like you're getting a unique weapon that's kind of like fun or does something special or is fucking broken and incredible. And it's like, well, if you don't have this, you may as well reconsider the character you're playing. Uh, but the thing that I really like about these is is they're wonderful little wild deviations from the status quo of like, hey, they're going to tie a story into this. You're going to go interact. There's tons of voice acting. There's, um, you know, measured things where it's like, okay. You got a crab. I got a collected a crab. Um, so this was Akitsu Kimodameshi. Nailed it. Uh, <laughs> So this would be perfect. <laughs> that, this would be this event, right, where we're 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 going and we're playing through the different breakouts, um, and then you know we're getting items. So one of the items, right, was a parasol weapon that was fucking cool uh, looking. So you know, big big kind of sweeping thing. There's a bunch of little quests that come along with it. So you, there's like a little fun story, and and that's where I think the stories excel in this game is the monthly little tidbit or um, the the big new sweeping story quests that they do are, are, are typically like really, really good. But these weird little monthly ones, like was it last month or the month before it, they just did Pokemon. Like you had mushrooms <laughs> and there was a tournament and you had to go befriend these things. And you're all running around and talking about friendship with your mushrooms and battling people. And there's God like the bad it. guys and you capture them and you have, Oh my God, it's, it is, it's just the weirdest thing in the entire world. And it's hyper condensed right because we're only talking about something that you know is going to it's not going to take up more than 30 20 minutes of your time there's a new faction in the world it's team sprocket <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean those 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 jokes are there um but they're not quite that obvious you know you read between the lines you're like this is clearly pokemon it's a character named fucking kappa wonderful uh one thing that i won't be showing you is uh the start menu this may be another something that i show in a different video altogether is this new thing they added in in this 3.3 patch which is Yu-Gi-Oh, motherfuckers <laughs> they added in a card game that uses the same elemental reaction philosophy uh i'm but, only interested in triple triad well it's actually really fucking good uh and my wife say, who has no weak points kaiba it's time to do a little, <laughs> yep yeah, yeah 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 it's good shit um so yeah, that that what I was showing you here is is this kind of like monthly event that's happening. So this one just you know technically we it's at a state where you can complete it all. Wind race right now is happening too, and I fucking hate it because it's multiplayer only. Uh, and it's gross. Yep, it's not fun. Well, I good. don't enjoy. I it. thought you said everything would be solo play. You don't have to play it. You don't have to. Right. <laughs> the only reason you would is because you want to get the rewards, and honestly, the rewards for this thing, right, are not super great. Right. We're getting Primo Gem, Primo Gems, and then we're getting our farmable junk. Right. Oh, so there's nothing like specifically unique to that. Not this one. Not like in in uh, uh, Aki Two where you get something really cool, which I'll show you. Uh, I get again really cool. Because the only getting sweaty nerd I want to interact with is this. Me. You get this umbrella that's a sword, and it's also an elemental mastery sword, which is really good because that's not typical. You want that for, um, you'd want that for a character that then is prioritizing element elemental mastery. So you know, uh, depending on my build for Kuki here, this would be a good sword pick for her. Wait, and is also, there an eye on that fucking thing? Yeah, it's a demon umbrella. Nice. Uh, ah, so he's looking at you, kid. 
Okay, so that's everything that I really wanted to show you guys. Um, minus uh, one big, humongous critical piece. But I'm, in the meantime, going to hand this over. Colin, you said you're going to come up to bat here? I will play the video game. Okay. The game of video. I'm going to send you to this domain. You should send him to someplace terrible where he's going to get his ass beat because I would love to see oh, this. That is how I like my games. I am curious to see what happens and you never playing this before and not knowing anything about the control scheme. Uh, Have fun, nerd. Just don't press the start button. You shouldn't have told which me one not gets to us do to that. The, which one opens the inventory? Uh, not telling you that either. Rats. Uh, okay. Here you go. I like to use the controller. Uh oh, some last minute microphone adjustments uh -oh, here. Oh, here we go. He's a leaning closer. forward. Come I'm on a little over. blind. Oh. oh. All right, off to a good start. All right, cool. We've Back shut up. the door. You uh, won. I He's can't opening really up the see menu from this far away. So uh, hold on, X, please. X button. <laughs> this is fucking delightful. <sighs> so your main, yeah, just. Oh, we're hit. doing hard. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, X to start. Start? Press yep, start. X to start. <laughs> press. Am I supposed to press start? Press X. <laughs> you fool. Delete. Delete character. Um, yeah, I'll let you see. I'll, uh, you can you can, you can can start piloting and see All what you members, All of mastery. that means nothing to me, so let's go. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to check my facts sheet here. Oh, yeah, blue, purple ring thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some of the resources that I like to use are catching coaching mains. It's a website, so it's going to be one of those. It's going to help you with um, secret of mana. Yep. Oh. There's our battle pass. Yeah. All kinds uh, of things are happening. That that'd be the one where they do like in depth research to to help with party comp and figure out like optimal builds and things like that. So I like that one. Vars2 has a good YouTube channel where he does some really None good None of the buttons do anything! Nope, they don't. It's all fake. Try the directional buttons. There you go. Uh, the red button will be your attack, yeah, your normal I'm attack. I'm pressing that repeatedly. Yeah, yeah. D-pad will be switch character. Yeah, I was trying to find that. Okay, okay. there we are. Yeah. Um, You're so, doing great. So those are the... So those I'll are take those. your word for it. There's some big streamer names out there who, uh, you know, I take it as you will. They're, they're kind of... They are what they are, right? Uh, that whole scene. Um, uh, I am interested, not interested, but more curious. I imagine this has an interesting streamer crowd. It is. It's it's a big streamer crowd. Um, so some of the bigger names, again, not not worth me saying them. Um, but they, most of them came from streaming other games and found a lot of success just because of the nature of Genshin. Um, not having a lot of, I'd say, mainstream love. So those folks who got in early developed a pretty good fan base and were able to, you know, stick with them. The problem with a streamer for this um, type of game is it's it becomes a lot of... Uh, Are you winning, son? I don't know, Dad. <laughs> it becomes arguing about whether or not a character is better than another character. Oh, and God. in this game, yeah, you can... You can uh, potentially <laughs> uh, make a case that there are characters who are more optimal than other characters because they fulfill certain roles and they have certain synergies. But, you know, endgame is achievable even if you have the most basic, basic characters. That reminds me, and it's, it's something that was super frustrating about the MMORPG days where it's you had, a, a, you had various classes and each class has had certain roles and desirabilities and it felt like it always changed. Like, specifically when I think back to EverQuest, you had, like, Paladins, which were terrible at the beginning, and then they were really bad. And then the next expansion, they became incredibly overpowered. So there's yeah. this constant, like, roller coaster of, of, like, the super end meta. And it was never... And it felt like that always created or fed into such a toxic world where it's like, if you weren't the one character that was broken for that specific... Or one class type that was broken for that yep. specific expansion, it was, like, this constant just vitriol that you had to just wade through it, it sucked. And that so Griff, you've got to be curious at this point what these six strats are that you're saying. I, uh, I'm hammering B as fast list. as I possibly can while sometimes pressing the trigger button because it looked like it did something once. Yeah, yeah. Uh, try holding B. And, uh, oh yeah? Yeah, yeah, try well, that. Not that you late. need it anymore. I already won because I'm a legend, so... 
You did. Look at that. Don't need to worry you about that. You just did an end game content right there. Now run to that tree and get some items. Don't get the item. I feel dirty that I was able to win that somehow. I, f I see. Mm. Uh, well, you did lose two characters. Took for fucking ever. Well, what does that mean? Do they come back to life? Or are they gone yeah. forever? Is this no, no, fire no. emblem? No, they're not gone forever. We'll just give them some food and they'll All be right, back. Hold, please. Uh, X. Would you like me to read the screen for you? Uh, I'm blind. So obviously, what you experienced there was yeah, you you cleared it, but uh, could you have done it better? Yeah, hundred percent. And that's you, you just, don't say. That's just I mean, <laughs> that's that's how it is. If that's not appealing to you, if you're like I did it, now what? And you're like the 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 idea of doing it better, and then you know the the did chase. Did I get anything cool? Uh, also, like go to those two legendary ones and click in the right stick. Are these the legendaries? Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. No. Bad. And then what do we got here? Uh, bad. Excellent. Sorry, Just like the nope, No, you're okay. That's that's fine. More fuel for the fire. I also think too. I mean, also, I mean, I, I assume Griff, you you've spent enough time to make these characters very very optimized and durable yeah. so that you could just hammer the button yeah this is my go-to team i love this team very much um Wee. both aesthetically and and uh, so so i wanted to go back to what you're saying gene which was you're saying like how in previous games you'd have the the booing and sh and and shrinking of desirability around certain <sighs> classes right as certain things got nerfed and patched and whatever yep. that really isn't a case in this game right because you don't there's no competitive nature. There's no PvP. You're not fighting other people to, you know, in an Fuck arena. Fuck you, tree! Um, and then because everybody has access, for the most part, to the same character roster... Um, You're not that, fighting over, like, the best-in-slot squabble, and there's not some yeah, horrid exactly. market on that. Exactly. Now, if you go in and you're joining somebody's match, and it's like, let's this just be a cute. team of, of kookies you're already like this is not a good idea because we're not <laughs> optimally building around our synergies uh we you know we're running one elemental type on a support healer uh so you would just just looking at that you're like okay there's this is bad there's no real point to do that I the don't only want character to talk to you yeah you're fucked now so that's one of the biggest things that Tell me about bitch. You. one of the biggest drawbacks to this game currently is there's no skip dialogue button <laughs> oh no! So John Jean's out. <laughs> yeah. I'm not dealing with fucking God of War two bullshit again. We're like, oh, you have to watch the cutscene again. Yeah, yeah. Well, fortunately, you don't have to do a lot of that. But if you were to try and I don't know, if you were one of those weirdos, I am not this who were to be building another account. Um, definitely never gonna do oh, that. Oh no! Then you can't mash through the story mode content in order to get to you know end game like a weirdo. Uh, anyway, that waterfall secret. That patching, that nerfing... I turned this off. There's no waterfall secret. Not here. Um, but that patching stuff doesn't occur, right? The only patch that happened was, was Big Boy Daddy Zhong Li uh, when he first came out. He was the first Archon that came out um, after the game's launch uh, that didn't come out with the game's launch. And everybody was like, oh, he's the biggest, baddest, coolest mrf -er. You can eat a food if you want. Um, Man, why you gotta turn to the cat guy who's running around in water? I'm sure he doesn't <laughs> like that. Well, uh, I don't like him. Oh, this is very slow. Okay, but they let's not do that anymore. They significantly <laughs> patched that one character to make him uh, more appealing, uh, just because it felt like the the audience the audience was very upset because of his uh, lack of well, it's like insanely overpowered nature. And now he's he's kind of looked down on because of how insanely overpowered he is. Um, but, I mean, I I. I I feel like, I mean, that's that's interesting where it's, it's I like the idea of in this environment where if you're adjusting and patching and changing characters, I feel like that's less catastrophic as to the old traditional MMORPGs where it's like you have somebody who spent like hours, of thou like, you know, hundreds of hundreds of hours on a particular class and character and then something game breaking changes. And now it's like all that time you spent in that character is not wasted, but it's now you have this like stain upon it or it's suddenly your character that's been you know looked down negatively for you know the last expansion is yeah is it's that's and that's that's symptomatic of the social environment of that game and that yep. being removed from here it's like gone it feels so much better and more appealing to be like oh cool you know i can expand and, and play with all these characters and not be afraid of like well i really should pick a rogue because that's the dps class that's the the top game meta yep. at this particular time in the, in yep. the juncture like so that's that's nice. It is nice. And what's actually really cool about the game is that... I'll take that back for a second here. Um, is yes, Is the... 
um, the developers Mihoyo. You left some fruit. Uh, thank you. Uh, they have definitely realized how how the meta is is being played. So um, when there are new updates and patches, so most recently when Dendro came out, you had a Kuki Shinobu who was kind of looked at as like a pretty low to mid tier ranked character. Uh, with the with the addition of Dendro, now you have an elemental synergy and reaction that didn't exist before and made this character incredibly more viable than they ever were before. So um, with the patches, they have only expanded viability over time, which has been really fucking cool. That's uh, awesome. So the more characters that have been added, the more they tend to work together. Like you saw my team here, Toma, he's kind of a dipshit and a laughing stock and nobody really used him but again with the addition of dendro now he has a spot um our optimal two teams this was um a major this is like our, our end game team team here hu tao and uh xing cho would be our vape combo uh we're hitting um enemies with wet and then we're hitting them with fire we get a vape so that's gonna be a 1.5 elemental reaction off that which yeah. Sorry, my favorite element, wet. <laughs> wet. <laughs> and then uh, te uh, vape team. My favorite team name is taser team, which is uh, an electro and water team. Uh, so you're constantly shocking all these different things by applying those two elemental statuses and building off that. Uh, we throw daddy in here just for protection because we sacrifice HP when we use uh, Hu Tao. You'll see here, right? See my HP to go down, but now I'm a fire mode. Um, so this was like one of the earliest games, hyper powerful teams, and it's still viable up to this point and not just viable, but like extremely powerful. Here's a second one. So this is the, uh, Ganyu freeze, right? Everybody's favorite status freeze. Everybody, uh, Shen, Shen he came out and was <clears throat> kind of shit, shit on for not being more powerful. One of the first, um, kind of dunked on characters. <clears throat> uh, but then Ganyu here, we've got this, so Archer, but then an Archer that then shoots three arrows upon impact. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, why is this game bad? I'm now glad you asked. real meat and potatoes. Yeah. So what's wrong with it? Th what's wrong with it? And this is um, what I wanted. I, I, I did this playthrough like this very specifically because the number one criticism that Genshin Impact gets is that it is a gotcha game. So we've already seen some of the random, you know, gambling chance stuff that happens loot boxes. when we're talking about um, not necessarily loot boxes, but when we're talking about uh, our, our artifacts and how, you know, we're farming and rolling and trying to get the most optimal build. <sighs> Problem is this game also runs on a currency system and a random chance character pull. Uh, so I saved this for last because I think that Genshin Impact is actually a really, really, really good game, um, despite it having some negatives, which would be, you know, it's Scotch's gotcha system. So you've to you've heard me talk about how much I love playing new characters and building complex team comps and trying out all the different synergies. The problem is that's gated by uh, a, a random character drawing system, which is not uncommon in, in gotcha games. Right. But the problem is like, OK, if I really, really, really wanted uh, Raiden Shogun here and I really, really wanted to use them in my party and I just like was like, wow, the aesthetics like I love Sword Booby Lady. Sword Booby Lady is so good. I want her on my team. I wanted this cool, powerful Electro um, Archon. Uh, so in order to do that, I need to have wishes. Right. So and then in order to do that, I need to get Primo Gems. And as you saw me show in a couple instances, there's ways to get those like opening treasure chests you'll get a couple of primo gems or um upping your world level or doing um upping up your character levels uh let me show you here so for example i think Furizon. but toma so um as part of our boosting our attributes right this is here's our shit that we get when we boost enough uh we also get a wish yay how nice uh, but they're bitch wishes that they give you. We want the good, juicy, pink wishes right there. And um, and the way you get that is through sweet, sweet money. No. So that's no. the thing, right? I talked about Primo Gems, right? We're, we're using those that currency, which is that top right thing that looks like a star. And you can then take that and turn it. Again, I don't want to press the button to go into the shop. I don't know what's going to show up. So 
um we turn that 160 equals one one wish mm -hmm. uh-huh so right if i had that right then i would be able to bada boom bada bang make that wish uh on this this limited banner so when i said before everybody has equal access to all the characters that's not true because if you were to play and you were to say hey i really want to run ganyu well you don't ganyu's a limited character that's only going to have a banner that shows up once a year or so for five three four weeks or 20 days uh maybe that she'll have a re-roll uh but now the limit there is did you strike gold when the banner was up so the ways to do that are get your primo gems right through completing all the different available quests tasks world quests events blah 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 blah, blah all the free stuff and then if you don't well now we can pay money for it um so that's where things get insidious there so how many wishes do i get by using the joysticks to write out my checking account number <laughs> <laughs> i mean you, you you well that was that was the comment with the money where it's this game it it is the the stupid phrase of like pay to win but i think it's it is it is insidious by its very nature because it, it does pull at that like the gambling inside of your brain you're gonna pull the lever you're gonna try to get the slot machine and you're gonna throw money at it until you get that like perfect you know lucky sevens but i think where that falls, at least in my opinion, falls a little less on the Insidious scale is that this isn't an MRPG. You're not like you're not interacting with a with a with an economy that other people are you know gating and influencing in ways. You're just you just have the option to drop money on this game to get the things you want without spending as much time. Now, yep. there's all sorts of philosophical arguments with that, but eh. Yep, you are absolutely right. I would also say that um, it's not play to win because you don't need the high-end top tier five-star characters in order to win even your base model dipshit main character uh is going to be able to take on every elemental type eventually so you have access to anything that you would need at the tip of your fingers right in order to fulfill any world quests uh you're also the thing is the game is also the developers are very generous right so you're getting um out the gate, Gene, you may recall, once you start playing the game from the start, you are given Lisa, Kaya, Sucrose, Chong Yoon. Uh, actually, I'm wrong about, I believe, Chong Yoon. Uh, but you're given basically one of every one of the elements. Amber here, your fire archer. So some of those things where it's like, oh, I need an archer to do this little world quest where I shoot balloons. Or I need fire to light these vines on fire to get to this other treasure chest or, f you know, solve this puzzle. That is all provided to you in just the base, right? Well, right. Content. I mean, you you have a toolkit that you can still you can bash through and get things, but like to truly like from playing to win perspective, it's like if you want the really big booty damage stuff, yeah, that's where it's like you can start writing the checks to make to increase your odds of getting those specific items. Which again, yes. like, yep. I mean, it's insidious, but is it the worst thing? I mean, also too, when you keep in mind and things, we think back to in our generation when we dropped sixty bucks on a game, and that would last us how many hours? Like, so when you break it down to how much entertainment you got for that dollar, when I look at games like this, and it's a it's a, it's a model where it's the base game is, quote, free, and you can spend money to enhance that in, that experience, I mean, as long as you're not to the point or you're not tickling that urge where you're dropping absurd amounts of money or money outside of your means or money outside of your disposable income to enjoy yeah. it, then what the hell's wrong with that? Like, yep, it's, it's just, it's a model that it, it's a model that sucks because it, in my opinion, it's a model that can suck because you have kids in situations that 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 impacts them very negatively. But as an adult and as a person who enjoys the game and wants to continue to see it grow, it's a model that allows the game to continue to live where it's 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 going to keep growing. There's going to be new additions, and that's a way for those developers and those individuals to continue to gain money through this you know project. Yeah. Yep. Ooh, Layla. Yeah. So, yes, I agree with you 100%. It is, it can be insidious. Uh, what I did is I just wished on the standard banner because I had some. And here we go. I got Layla. I already have Layla, but I'm getting constellations for her, which unlock more things. So, again, what I'd want to say, right, is it's important to know that if you were like, man, this game just looks kind of relaxing and fun, like I want to try it and enjoy it, you can do that without dropping a penny and it's totally viable. Is this in front of you? Is it top of the menu? Right? Are you looking at your characters and you're like, whoa, man, I sure wish I had Constellation. I had C6, so if I die, I, I get returned back to 1 HP. That'd be so cool, right? You look at these and you're like, man, having all those would be really freaking neat. 
um, it, it's viable to get, dragon. right? That's that's exactly right. But do you need that stuff in order to play it and experience it? There's just so much content in here that you don't right need to be doing that. But um, that's not to you know hand wave it and dismiss it. Uh, so what I did, I just did the ten. So every ten, there's a pity system. You know, you should be guaranteed one of these special things, a four star item. Or character, what do we get? Skip, bye bye. Okay, so we got a stupid sword. Blah, garbage. Um, yeah. So, there is some kind of insidiousness, and this is the other side of the streamer kind of grossness, right? It's like, hey, just watch me drop a thousand dollars and just go through polls to see uh, how, if I can ooh. get, how quickly I can get Ayato, right? And it's like, oh man, that is That's, some yucky, yuck, yuck stuff right there. Like, it's the whole, like, gambling stream thing where it's like, I, I could not believe that that is... I still can't believe that's technically not illegal to watch somebody else gamble, but uh, yeah. it's also super weird where it's you're watching people gamble and they seem awfully lucky and they're, you know, supporting this website. And that's sure that is does. a very questionable conflict of interest there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing with these type of games is like, OK, person's going to drop a thousand dollars on it. OK, how much of those was company donated you yeah, know, absolutely. Like, like you tell me, like developers don't have like some social media, like you know, department where they can be like, I reach out to this popular person. Hey, here, here's a thousand dollars worth of free polls. You get to keep all the stuff. Just you know, air it on your stream. Yep, exactly. So does, does it happen? I, I don't know. I'm sure Is it, it does. more than likely that happens? Look at this. There's all sorts of shit you can do here. Like I can go to this place. And I can just build a house. But here's the real <laughs> question, Griff. Can you cook food? I can cook food. Because I remember grabbing mushrooms and throwing them in a pan. Oh, wait, was that Breath of the Wild? I don't know, there's a lot of crossover. Uh, more or less, it's the same thing. Like, I can go to this place, Dude, I can craft a furniture. I think it's an owl. It's an owl in a teapot. Yep. I That's can even better. I can make friends with all my characters. I can build out this castle. It's Tubby! His name is Tubby! <clears throat> His name is Tubby, lives in a teapot. Um, yeah, so I can build out this realm. I don't know. I, I, I think it's gross. I did want to cite this source here. So, Gene, you'd said that you'd given some really good... Um, uh, rationale behind why you would want to do certain things regarding the polls, but uh, I highly recommend to anybody um, Natasha Dow Scholl's Addiction by Design, Machine Gambling in Las Vegas, the book, or listen to the episode of Game Study Study Buddies uh, where they talk about the book. Uh, and it is uh, one of the things that's brought up there is how gambling as a um, as a researchable <sighs> addiction? Well, let's say an industry um they try and measure and say how do we get people to continue to gamble because obviously gambling is bad like the chance of you winning something significant is very low the house always wins right so uh what they've found is what what's been found and what's cited in that book is that time on machine equates to money so the goal is not necessarily to extract the maximum amount of money from people. It's to keep a person playing something for the longest amount of time because when that happens, you boil the frog slow enough, it doesn't know it's dying. Um, and then it's, it, well, it, it, increases, it increases your chances of, of getting money for that person. Because how many phone games over the years since phone games became a thing, did you eventually break down and be like, yeah, I'll drop two bucks. Yeah, and, and then from, from a positive side to be like, I really like this game. I'll give the developers, you know, the $5 for it to exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Which, working in a casino and listening and knowing all of the weird things that casinos do to try to very much keep you at a slot machine or a table as long. I think my favorite thing is that most casinos don't have, there, there will never be a clock anywhere openly on a wall in a casino anyway. It, it'll all seem like it's always a similar time of day. But, I mean, the goal, like you said, keep people there. Odds are they're going to spend money the longer they spend time there. Yep, exactly. Keep the people on the machine. Give the little victory, you know, give Your them a UIDs little... visible, sir. What's that bottom right thing? Uh, it'll go... It, I have a banner over it. Oh. Yep, we just don't see it on the screen. Um, but thank you. Sweet. The, uh... I'm trying to protect you, sir. From yes, all yes. Those internet pirates. Oh, those dirty pirates. Yeah. So here's the here's the, look at all these delicious foods we can craft. Yum yum yum. I gotta make this crab. I gotta make this crab. Ooh, was that a crab you caught earlier? I should have deleted all those. No, my sweet crab. <laughs> Fucking monster! Don't you dare delete the crab. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's that's Genshin Impact, and I don't expect anybody to watch this and be like, "Wow, I totally get it now." Uh, or I'm appealing, it appeals to me. But I wanted to show people, like, what it is that isn't 
purely just the money extraction kind of bad name that's given to it. That it is actually a very, very good Zelda Breath of the Wild like <laughs> so <laughs> tool. This is the first like castle area, is it? Yeah, this is your first area. This is Bondstadt, the wind world, the wind country. So I distinctly remember like wandering around this area and thinking, this game is free. Yep. There's a lot of just stuff to poke around and I mean, you know my playstyle. I'm going to be the person that tries to level up to 9,000 before I get past chapter one. And there definitely appeals to a lot of that, where you can wander around, kick random treasure chests, fight a bunch of bugs. I don't know. What was the Mona girl doing? Sliding around on a water surfboard. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, it's there's a lot of, of stuff to do for a free game. But oh, yeah. You, if Once you realize that the goal is to keep you in the game or keep you playing the game as long to get some money out of you, that's 100% true. Yep. Now, the, the crappy thing, or I guess the, the frustrating thing is, is, as an adult, you have to realize it's okay to spend money on things that you enjoy. Yes. Just within your means. Yeah. Don't go out of your... Or if I have a question. Yeah. Have you spent money on Genshin Impact? Oh, yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Besides the battle pass, I've, I've dropped money on Primo Gems. Um, I've spent money on a tattoo of Genshin Impact. So, I pretty much got them all. I mean, I dropped money on this damn game when I played it for a month or so? Yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah. But it's... If it's something you really like to do, you have fun playing it all the time, then you are a consenting adult. Uh, you, I don't see anything wrong with spending a little bit of money. Well, like my I don't usual... think you should become the addict that drains their entire bank account into it. <laughs> but uh... I mean, I think, I think a valid piece of information, and I think... Mr. Llama made this comment, and it made a lot of sense to me. When it comes to any kind of game, whether it's a gotcha or otherwise, I usually will budget, like, if, I, if I'm if i having a great experience and I want to further push what I'm doing or further explore, further give myself a little bit of edge to do more stuff, 40 bucks is usually my cutoff point. That's what I'll drop on something to really be like, because that's what I would average on a new a new-ish game. So as long as it's not, like, pushing past that, or if I spent that and I'm like, oh, I got to drop another $40? That's when it's like red flag. No. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's all... That's good you have your... That's but, that's the important thing is you have your rules set out for you. It's $40 is going to mean something different for everybody. Um, and I think that, that, that what I want to really make clear is that is in this game. And if you don't have that type of mindset like you've done, Gene, there where you can clearly say this is how... This is what I'm going to allocate my funds towards. It can get tempting you know with all the content out there with with how they dangle this stuff like in front of you and give you an opportunity to hey just just go try pulling the arm on the slot machine out here see see if you like running this character actually i kind of like this too because it's like you could try ayato through this you get to play as him right not my party uh and i could be like i actually really just think this is super boring i don't want to do uh, ayato i don't I have, doing this has made me not interested in this character at all. And this has hap happened to me on several occasions where it's like, I'll try him through the trial main uh, tool here. And it's like, yeah, I just don't like it. Um, and then the, most of these characters will have story quests where they'll play a significant role. Their backstory comes into it. You get to play with them throughout the quest in your party. And again, it's like another like one side of it is well it's gross because now you're getting a little taste test wet your appetite do you like this do you like this um on the other hand if you take it earnestly it's like yeah maybe i don't maybe i don't like playing as this character and i have no interest in it and you know it's not going to cross my radar yeah but i mean it's i mean i get it like yeah that's a, that you can look at that as a situation where here here's a taste to get you hooked but also that's content that's been created and added to the game that you can experience as part of the main quest so is it you're still able to enjoy that aspect of the game. I don't know. I, I, I guess it seems it seems like a weird situation to argue, or a weird... I don't know, it's just weird, because it's like, okay, is it a taste, or is it like, you know, hey, there's this character that these developers spent time building and creating and adding to this world. I mean, as if somebody creating something, it would kind of suck to make something and be like, yeah, I'm really proud of this character. I understand that this game world has a, a, a pay, you know, element to it, but having that locked behind where nobody experienced that unless they get lucky enough with, you know, the role or the whatever. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, this is weird. And I can go into detail about the pity system and how many wishes it takes for you to actually... You could do mathematics and say if you're the worst, most unlucky person consistently in the entire world, how many wishes it would take you to get to that character that you really wanted. And it, it gets to the point of, like, 
uncool dollars. Uh, but again, like you said, it's it's a matter of how much do you want a shortcut? How much do you want to spring out of the game to so you don't you know so you can use what what what's given to you? Um, if you again, all this is contingent on you enjoying it. My point is that there are so many cool things that this game affords me, and so many relaxing things that I like to do within it that. It's like, okay, so if I'm going to go get some treasure chest opened up and I get some Primo gems out of it and then I turn that into a character down the line, I'm having a great time. The beast continues to feed. <laughs> Is it kind of gross? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, I, I think as long as it's, like you said, Gene, as long as it's not infringing upon my well-being and, <laughs> you know, as I'm not, like, you know, selling my blood for <laughs> for Primo gems, that's... that's or you know however you need to justify that um it 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 can be a slippery slope and it's dangerous when you when you put this in the hands of people who may not have that flexibility or who have you know the the mental state to be able to have that type of control in place um but i think that's i think that this is a problem that video games is going to have to figure out as time goes on because i see the future being more along this line so we see fortnite with the battle passes as we see some of those other big name like warzone uh uh, Call of Duty stuff, taking on these type of things where you're getting these micro rewards um, for for real money, it's gonna happen. And I think this is gonna be something that that you know the DLC days, the days of you know spending money on a fixed game and and that being that is is gonna be drawing an end. And I think we're gonna be seeing more of this style of of drip feed um, uh, time. I think delivered content. Go ahead. I mean, I think so. Yeah, I, I think that I think the overall large model is going to definitely gear towards again to this style where it's you have microtransactions and a way to spend real currency in a game through the entire like, you know, whether it be like you know, the old MMORPGs where you have a monthly pass that gives you access to the game and all the rewards or whatever. Or if you have, you know, you could spend additional money for unlockables or specific things. I think there's a weird there's a very fine line between what the community, what the gaming community accepts in certain types of games and what they don't. Cause I, I think back to loot boxes, that was something yeah. where there was a rebellion where people were absolutely fucking furious for good reason, because it was so goddamn blatantly ridiculous and for little at that point. Yep. So I think, I think it's, I think the the model that's being used now, that's the growing is, I mean, being an old grizzled veteran, it's like I'm kind of sad to see like the single purchase and that's your game, and then you buy the expansions or whatever. Kind of, it's there's a part of me that's sad to see those go, but I also like this uh, to an extent because one, you know, you have a studio that's not beholden to pushing out a new big game every X amount of years and letting the old one rot and die. They can actually, you have a studio that's devoted to Genshin Impact, is for as long as it's profitable. Yep. So you as the player can enjoy that for as long as that exists. Yeah, I would say, too, if you're interested in that kind of a model, uh, there's a documentary by Noclip. Danny O'Dwyer uh, does it, and he covers Warframe, uh, which was... It's been on my radar as a video game that's the same type service model, you know, gotcha um, kind of uh, themed uh, underlying pieces to it. And it's he, he talks about the, the studio's you know rise and fall or not even fall but rise and and what is warframe and and how what they created almost by accident has play has created a playbook for other um games to operate on so when i watched that documentary i could see a lot of cool similarities between uh how warframe and genshin is delivering content and and uh and uh, rolling long out way down yeah it is so yeah i just wanted to show this off here too like it's you can look anywhere and you can pretty much go there hey you found a treasure Ah! yeah so i think that's gonna be it we're uh where i want to wrap you guys have any other questions or anything you want to take a look at here hey who is that over there it's me i'm watching the game oh hey Hey, Colin. Hello. Hey, Gene. Thanks. Uh, I guess thanks a lot for for humoring me and coming along for this journey and checking out Genshin Impact with me. And I can't wait to hear how you guys are building your team next. I'm going to get started tonight. I believe it. Oh, my God. I have to download it again. <laughs> I wonder if I still have all the stuff. Well, fellas, thank you. This has been Boss Bro TV. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.